Good morning, Hawthorne Assembly. Good morning. It is so good to see everybody uh, talking to each other and laughing with each other and, and uh, giving hugs around and high fives and handshakes. I just love being in the presence of God's people, don't you? Let's stand and praise him for who he is. He is our king. He is our soon coming king in future tense. And he is our king who came long ago. And so we celebrate both of those things in this Advent season. Amen. Amen. Let's use our hands this morning. Hawthorne Assembly. It's great to be here on this first Sunday of Advent. And uh, for those who are watching on live stream on YouTube, welcome. And I know that we have people who watch every week and we're just grateful that you're able to. Some are distance away. We've had people as far as Malaysia who watch our live stream. And we have people, of course, who are shut-ins or are convalescing or they're just recovering from some kind of illness. And 
they're live streaming our service today, so that's wonderful. And we're grateful for technology. But most of all, we're grateful that we have the presence of the living God with us here this morning. And we recognize that each and every week. We don't just start the service without, we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Amen. And we believe that today, this is an outstanding day because the presence of Almighty God is with us, amen, amen, through His Holy Spirit. So let's agree together corporately as we pray and begin this service. Father God, we thank you. We pray these things in the strong and mighty name of Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you today that you have not left us as orphans. You said that when you were, would return to your father, you would leave us a counselor, someone just like you, an advocate. And so, Holy Spirit, we are grateful for your presence in this place today. We even pause just to soak in your presence right now, to turn off the things that are the distractions of life that maybe we've come in with, the troubles, the heartaches, Dear friend, whoever you are this morning, your troubles are real. They're not artificial, but God's here to be greater than your troubles. God's here to be the answer to your trouble. God's here to bring hope where there's no hope. God's here to bring peace that passes all understanding. That's for someone here powerfully this morning. God wants to meet you right where you're at. So Lord, we thank you for your presence. We don't serve a dead God. We don't serve some empty cross that's an icon on our wall. It is a symbol of hope. It is a symbol of our faith. It is a symbol of the promise that you have left the cross and that one day you will return to gather us together. And until then, we want to occupy. We want to gather as we should as believers. And we forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. And so we're grateful for each individual that's come here today to worship you and to honor you in your mighty name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Let's continue to worship the Lord this morning. Amen. Stand if you'd like. Sorry for interrupting. Sit if you want. Clap. Would you like them to clap, Janet? Love it. Can they, can they do a, a, a controlled tap with their foot too? If that, is that okay for you conservatives? Well, if it's uncontrolled, we'll know it. Okay. So until then, okay. be free. All right.
halfway in that second verse, by thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts alone. Lord Jesus, Father God, in this Advent time, Lord, help us to turn our hearts to the reason that you came. It's a beautiful story, but there's so much meaning in it. Because you knew that only by your example could we really live for you, God. We just make this our prayer. I want to know you, God. I want to know you, Lord, like I know a friend. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know. that the traditions of man make the power of God null, which means powerless. Sometimes we have to get past the traditions that we've learned from childhood and really just dig into the Word and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to us in the real sense, not in what man has said or the way he's been presented sometimes in in a false light. Lord, we really want to know who you are truly in the real sense of who you are, God. I've been told. Lord, I've been told to be ashamed. Lord, I've been told I don't been
feel like there's somebody either here or listening that's been bound by traditions and they just can't seem to let go of their traditions. They feel like they're going to be untrue to their parents or their upbringing or whatever it is that keeps you from being free in the Lord. came to seek and save the lost. And whatever it is in your past, whether it's sin or tradition, you can be free in the simple gospel of Jesus that he came to set us free from the law and to walk into his grace. Amen.
is good isn't he he is he's so good to us let's just kind of wait in his presence in these moments of pause and reflection not that the Lord has to speak to us audibly but if he does amen Maybe he's speaking to you right now. God, we open our hearts to receive, to flow with your spirit in even greater ways, personally, beyond the four walls of this church, with our families, during this Advent season, God, that we would be sensitive in greater ways sensitive so that we can be your hands and your feet to our world to our circle of influence to our family to our work associates wherever you lead us and guide us and direct us this Christmas Advent season, God. May the hope of Emmanuel be clearly evident in our hearts, in our lives, in our speech, in our shopping, in our behavior. We thank you for it. This first Sunday of Advent, God. Even the way we would embrace one another today, God, there would be a level of expectation and hope-filled optimism that Emmanuel is with us in such a great way. Amen. All right, ushers, would you come, please? We'll wait on the congregation for the Lord's tithe. Thank you and your faithful giving. Father God, we thank you for the tithe that belongs to you and the offerings that we give above the tithes, like our pavilion, our missions fund, our BGMC, so many different things. We're just grateful for the faithful contributions week in and week out of all these wonderful people in your mighty name. Amen. God bless you as you give.
Amen. Thank you. Behold, a Savior is born. For those who don't know that on Friday, we had the celebration of life for my mother, Reinhilda Agnes Dawkin. And uh, it was a glorious homecoming for her, a celebration. And we just are grateful for the, our friends at the Wilmer Assembly of God Church who were just so nice and hospitable. And we had a wonderful uh, gathering of individuals, family and friends, and a number of individuals who came just because they loved my mother because she had an, a business called Alterations by Hilda. And uh, it was just wonderful. And but prior to... The service, it's becoming kind of common now, especially with so many individuals who are choosing cremation. I'm not up here to give you a stance on that. I'm just giving you information, okay? So understand what I'm telling you this morning. They're starting to now where they have these small family services prior to the celebration of life, prior to the funeral where you go to the cemetery. There's a smaller hole that's dug open which was done for my mom and dad, and my mom and dad's ashes were both, I laid them in the hole on Friday and uh, dropped some roses into the hole. I was, of course, uh, very touched. I was touched, actually, uh, not just by that, but just by the whole experience. But I wasn't sad. I wasn't, like, heartbroken because I had hope because I knew that that was just the ashes of my parents, that was just the physical remains, and uh, that they are with Jesus in heaven. And I have great hope that one day I'll be with them again, that we'll be with our loved ones again. And I was thinking as we were on our way to the uh, church and getting ready for the visitation and the celebration of life, how do people cope who have no hope? when they bury those boxes in the ground, when they bury their loved one in a casket in the ground and they don't have the hope of eternal life, what, what must they go through? What pain must they be dealing with and wondering about? And so what, isn't it wonderful that during this Advent Christmas season, as we talk about uh, a Savior who is born, this Sunday we're talking about week one, the promised hope. And it's an honor for me every Sunday to share the Word of God with you. And on this first Sunday of Advent, I'm just really blessed to be here. Janet and I, and I have had a busy month, a busy year, a busy year and a half with our parents. We now have three parents that are with Jesus in heaven. And Janet's mother, eight, almost 89, lives in central Kansas. And so Christmas will be a little different this year. Uh, and Thanksgiving was a little different, and some of you can resonate with what I'm saying and uh, identify. Uh, but today, traditionally within the church, this begins a season of preparation for God's people to fully embrace the birth of Jesus Christ. And it is one of my favorite times of the year. How about you with an uplifted hand? Say, yeah, this is one of my, all right, amen. I've got a few fans, amen. Um, it's one of my favorite times because you can already get a sense that Christmas is coming, right? I mean, there's, there are already houses on County B, not B Road. I, I just said that to see if you're listening, okay? It's, this person knows who I'm talking about. Uh, that on County B, there are signs, there are Christmas lights. Have you noticed them yet? Or wherever you live? Life FM is playing the festive Christmas music. And there are Christmas goodies uh, already being uh, eaten, all right? And it's, we're, we're not even close to Christmas, so it's happening. I shop at Aldi. Anybody else shop at Aldi? They've got German Christmas cookies there. I'm telling you, they're, I'm not, I don't get a commission. This is all no charge. I'm their, I'm their unofficial official spokes, spokesperson, you know what I'm saying? Um, but this morning, we are beginning a brand new sermon series, Behold the Savior. Thousands of years ago, there were prophets in the Old Testament who wrote about a future day when God would send a Savior to his people. Most of you are aware of those scriptures. He would make a way for all things to be healed from the devastating effects of sin. 
the devastating effects of sin that started with Adam and Eve and were soon even experienced with Cain and Abel, right? We've had this trouble since the beginning. This is nothing new. And if it wouldn't have been Adam and Eve, it had been the next people who would have fallen. You and I for sure. He would make a way for all things to be healed, though. That's the wonderful thing of Emmanuel. He would make a way for all things to be healed from this devastating effect of sin. And it is during this season we celebrate. Think about this. We celebrate that in a manger, in a stable made for animals in Bethlehem long ago, there was a baby born, the Lamb of God who would change the world. Changed my life, has he changed your life? I'm different because of that lamb of God born in that stable 2,000 plus years ago. Christmas is all about embracing hope. I have lots of hope even though I've just buried my mom and dad. I am full of hope. How about you? (coughs) Excuse me. And this embracing hope, it, this happens in many ways. I, I remember when I was a kid, we were going through pictures, thousands of pictures, for my dad's celebration of life and for my mom's celebration of life. We were going through thousands of pictures to find the right ones. I put 94 pictures on a slide presentation to the song by Nat King Cole, Unforgettable. It's really pretty cool. That's only two seconds per per picture. That's all you get. You gotta watch fast, but it's well worth it because there's stuff in there that's just so moving and tender for, especially for my family. Uh, But then there were some pictures I found of Christmas. This is why pictures and and, uh, all your memory things, your memory discs and your jump drives, Take care of them, make sure you protect them, because those are some fond memories. That's the name of our Lupinwald, Christmas at Lupinwald theme for this year is fond memories. I found pictures of what my mom and my dad, the extent they went through to make Christmas special for us three boys. They're fond memories. I didn't, I had forgotten that my dad erected this cardboard fireplace. Did anybody else ever have one of those? I thought this was, I couldn't remember it, but it was way cool when I saw the picture and it flooded memories back into my life. I went, oh, my parents went all out for us. I mean, they were special. And um, so I think about the things that I remembered after seeing these pictures and I remembered that us three boys, we would go and check out the Christmas tree every day. Why? To see if there were new presents. Feel them, anybody else did this? Feel them, shake them a little bit. Just make, you know, I don't know that we ever peeled the tape back, I don't think we did. We figured we probably, our mom would know that we'd done something like that, so. But we felt them, we shook them, we tried to put them right back wherever they were under the tree. That's what boys do. Is there anyone else in here that did things like that? Or willing to admit? Oh, I see some nodding heads. And so, we would be all excited because December 24th, not December 25th, in the docking home, here was our plan. You got to open a present, one present on Christmas Eve. Does anybody else have that kind of, yeah. That's it, one present, all the rest on Christmas Day. We actually hauled them with us to our aunt's house. So all these tr- Christmas presents under the tree got put in big ba- uh, bat, you know, garbage bags and we took them to our aunt's house and opened them up there. But Christmas Eve, baby, you, you scoped out, you shook them enough and felt them enough, you said, that's the one I'm opening. There was a lot of hope, boy, in what was inside that wrapping, amen? And my wish list, all, and I'm just being honest, my wish list was not long, but I guarantee you it was filled with hope. I was thinking, man, I hope I get that. I hope I get that little uh, BB gun or this or that or whatever it might be. You remember those days, right? The little cap guns. You remember the little cap guns that you put that little red tape in? Bah, 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 bah. Did anybody else have those? I'm showing my age now by telling you about those things. Most of us can relate to this type of hope being instilled into our young hearts. This hope 
which every child feels or hopes to feel, is pointing to something bigger. Something bigger. Greater and more meaningful than any earthly gift can offer. This hope is this big present this holiday, and that big present this holiday is Jesus. It's his birth. And we experience hope beyond that yearly celebration. I love Christmas. But if Christmas was just Christmas for gifts, it would have no hope attached to it for something greater. The fact that we'll spend eternity with Emmanuel. We'll spend eternity with our God, amen? We'll spend eternity thanking him for the gift of eternal life. Beyond the lights, beyond the decorated tree, beyond the gifts, beyond the joyous gatherings. Yeah, I'll take that, thanks. And my, my microphone, is, or whatever this you wanna call it, it is just giving me fits today. Thank you. You know what happens when you give somebody a cold cup of water? Mm -hmm. Things like purpose, listen to me now. Things like purpose, meaning, significance, forgiveness, wholeness, those are the things that are available to us because of Emmanuel. Those are the gifts that we receive because of salvation. Those are wonderful things. I was thinking about that today, that part of my spiritual growth and spiritual maturity, now, now listen to me. Listen to me because you're gonna say, pastor says we shouldn't read the Bible. That's not what I'm saying. Do not walk out of here thinking that's what I said. But I wanna know the word. I want, but I wanna live the word. I wanna live the word. I wanna, I wanna flow in forgiveness in hospitality. I don't wanna just know the verses so I can tell people I know the verses. I wanna know the verses so that I won't sin. I wanna know the verses so I'll forgive better as I grow even older. I wanna be the most forgiving person when I breathe my last breath. I wanna be the most charitable person when I breathe my last breath. I wanna be the most kind person when I breathe my last breath. How about you? That's the hope that Jesus gives us. So our first thought today is the signs of, of God give us hope. The signs of God give us hope. Now here, we, here we'll start. We're gonna get to our first Bible verse here in just a second, and I'm gonna have you all stand. But listen to this. The people of God in the Old Testament were waiting and hoping for God to fulfill his promise to bless them and through them, bless the entire world. And we are benefactors of that, aren't we? They were hoping for a Messiah. The word Messiah means anointed one. The Messiah would be sent to rescue and heal all of creation from the destructive effects, not yet, yeah, the destructive effects of sin. The prophet Isaiah wrote about this hundreds of, of years before the birth of Jesus. So stand with me, open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter seven. Let's re honor the reading of the word of God by standing. You're not standing for me, you're standing for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Emmanuel. Here it is, Isaiah seven fourteen. You ready? I see pages still flipping, I'll wait. This one should be highlighted in your Bible. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth, birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Now before you're seated, little small side teaching, anytime you see therefore, it means whatever is before it is attached to what's after or after it. And so it would behoove you today to take some time and read the whole chapter of Isaiah 7 and really soak in a chapter that its title at the top is, says about the, the prophecy or the, 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 the de declaration that soon would come, Emmanuel, okay? What does yours say? Nothing? Who's got, who's got a title above their chapter seven? What does it say? Emmanuel the Emmanuel prophecy. 
So read that whole chapter seven and just soak that in. Amen, you may be seated. We've already prayed. God promised to give his people a sign for when the promised and anointed one would finally arrive. And Isaiah 7, specifically 14, is part of that promise. This was meant to give them something to wait for, just like those gifts under the tree. Man, how many are already waiting for uh, the 24th? I am. Now, we do it different now at the dock at home. We got smart. We open everything but one on the 24th. We leave only one for the 25th. Hey, there's no, there's no Bible verse that says how to do this. Do it however you want. Amen? Wrap them in see-through cellophane. There you go. Then there's, no, just kidding, don't do that. <laughs> just kidding. Jeepers. This promise was meant so their hearts would be filled with hope. I love decorating the Christmas tree. How about you? I love it. I love, we cut down the real tree. If you have an artificial tree, so be it. As a matter of fact, Janet said, she said, Joe, do you think we can run an extension cord from the house all the way out to County Road B, and we can light up that one pint? I said, because I knew that meant me having to do a lot of work. And I said, what if we spend like 80 or $90 and go get one of those insta-pop-out trees that's got lights on it at, at, at Walmart? How much are they? Are they about 100 bucks? More than that? Oh, boy. If you have a creative idea for Pastor Joe, let me know. I, I got to get a Christmas tree out by the road so that you all know where to, where to turn right. We don't want you to miss our house when you come on uh, for a Christmas at Lupinwald. So, but I, I love our tree that's going to be in the house. Last year, it was 17 feet high. We've got vaulted ceilings, so we can do it. It was 17 feet last year. No, that was the tree here at the church. Ours was 14 Sorry, sorry, you're going to miss out on three feet if you come to our house this year. Four, 14 feet up in the air, full of lights. We put, we put thousands of lights on the tree, and just about every decoration, every bulb, every ornament is different. And then my wife has garland? She has garland from the 1900s. <laughs> Serious. You don't believe me. Yeah, 1920. I'm not exaggerating. Not garland, not, what do you call it? Yeah, glass garland. You better come, then you'll know what's happening. Don't say we didn't invite you. We're inviting you again. Pastor Joe is saying, make sure you tell my wife if you're coming Saturday or Sunday, okay? We're going to have, I just ordered 120 Bavarian pretzels. That would make you all come just that alone. The big ones. They're going to be good. Hundreds of years before Mary and Joseph ever came to Bethlehem, hundreds of years before there was ever a crowded inn and an old stable, God had spoken through the prophets. Aren't we glad for that today? 600 plus years before he came, God spoke, saying that this would happen and this would provide hope for us today in 2023. God told his people to watch. God told his people to watch for a virgin who would become pregnant. Now, this is a very interesting sign. First of all, this does not happen every day. In fact, it would be a miracle for a virgin girl to just become pregnant. The only other time I've ever heard of it is in one of those Star Wars movies. They talk about this. I have never seen another movie that talked, you know what I'm talking about, right? For you Star Wars fanatics, this is, this is, a, this is a pretty powerful thing when we think about it. I am so sorry, folks. This thing is just being a pain Maybe we could pray and get about four or five hundred dollars and get a get one that's got a headband that goes across like that, so this thing doesn't move all the time like that. What a distraction! 
But this miracle would indicate that it was of God and not of man. Man, that's, that's good. Just think what he designed for us. The things he put into place. The hundreds of years he waited for things to be fulfilled. It's powerful. Also, this pregnant woman would give birth to a son, and his name would be Emmanuel. I got to tell you a little side story because we got enough time. I used to kind of not like all the people. Not, let me back up. I used to not like the fact that people would pick the names out and figure out if it was a boy or, boy or girl ahead of time. I said, you're ruining it all. That's just worldly stuff. And then one day I was thinking about it. No one actually came to me and said it. I think the Holy Spirit said, wait a second. You know what? We told Mary that it was going to be a boy. And we told him what name to you. I said, okay, Lord. All right, fine. They can do all the pictures they want and figure out what they want way ahead of time. It's fine. So I'm sorry for all the tension I had in, when I didn't think that was the right thing to do. See? We got to be willing to adjust and change, right? This pregnant woman would give birth to a son and already knew that his name would be Emmanuel and Jesus. The signs of God, now listen to me, this is for us today in 2023. Note this, the signs of God working in your life will often be things that you could not produce on your own. Let me say it again. This is very important. The signs of God working in your life will often be things that you could not produce on your own. Can I tell you a small little, uh, just miracle story? So I'm going through those pictures again. I mean, I I wanted some sentimental moments about my mom. I mean, there was another 100 pictures I could have put on there. I would have had to play the same song. We, we used the song by Nat King Cole, Unforgettable. You all know it. It's just, it's wonderful. And, uh, but we're going through these slides, and I find this slide of my mother, and I really didn't pay attention to the background. I just saw my mom. That's kind of how I was picking slides out, by the ones that the picture was fairly clear. Some of them are blurry, but most are pretty clear and pretty crisp. And I said, oh, she's standing by a bunch of German stuff. This is cool. Okay. This picture was taken years ago. When were you at Wilmer Assembly of God? Ballpark, Greg. 2001, this was a picture of my mother standing next to their booth when they came to itinerate at Wilmer Assembly of God, and I didn't even notice it when I picked out the picture, and so Katie and Aaron were there for the celebration of life, and Katie was putting the pictures on the, we also had a slide presentation, then we had the full blackboards, you know, with the pictures on them too, and, and Katie goes, that's my dad, and that's my dad and mom's, that's their booth. They must have been at the Wilmer Assembly. I said, oh my goodness. Because I remember when they came to our church in Northfield, Minnesota, and, their, and Kendra was about yay high, and Katie was only about yay high, and never in my wildest imagination did I think that that one young girl would one day be my daughter-in-law. God works in miraculous ways that are way beyond our ability to make anything happen. That all happened by the providence of God. And sometimes it's not till years later you wonder why you went through that thing. You went through this. Why did this happen in my life? Why did I go through this experience? And then all of a sudden it makes sense because we serve a God of hope. Amen? Amen? I'm going to say it again. The signs of God working in your life will often be things that you could not produce on your own. Because I was sitting at the, after the, after, I've got, we've got one other boy. He's a handsome boy. He's 28. He's single. We're trying to find him a godly woman. Amen. So I'm, I'm trying to work this thing, okay? (laughs) 
but I, I got to keep away from it because I want God, I want God to do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? But it's in us. Come on, you, you parents, you're, you've tried it too, haven't you? Just be honest. You man, I got to find him a wife. He's going to get, he's going to have gray hair soon. No, just kidding. I want it to be God, the providence of God. Amen. I want it to be something that's filled with hope that I had no part in manipulating. They will be things that only God can do. This is where hope is born. If I could do things on my own, I would have no need for God. How about you? The truth is we need his divine power. I need it. That's why I'm pretty chipper today and pretty alive today, uh, even though I've, gone, I've lost my parents. You know, I knew that day was coming, but it still, it still weighs on our hearts, doesn't it? I mean, it's going to be Christmas without my, my mom and dad. My brother's in the hospital with COVID, getting over that. He couldn't even go to the, fun- the celebration of life for his mom. I could sit up here and just tell you about all the, the difficult things. I could tell you about the fact that now we're going to have to deal with some uh, legal things because of just things that happened over the last couple months. But it's okay. Because you know why? Because God is my source. God is my strength. He's my ever-present help in time of need. And if I don't allow him to be the God of hope and do the things that only he can do, then I just jump in the way and I mess things up. A lot of your lives are messed up because you got ahead of God. You didn't let God work it out. You didn't let God soften a, a difficult situation. You didn't let God work in your child's life. You just manipulated it all over the place. I'm just being honest, okay? Because I've been there myself. But we need to believe in the God of hope today that can make all things work out, amen, for his good, for his glory. He still saves marriages. He still heals diagnosis of sickness. We're believing for Brandy that there is going to be a miracle for this young 23-year-old gal. We don't understand why she's going through what she is, but we serve a God of hope. We serve a God that heals, delivers, sets free. Some of you in here have children that are still bound by things, and you're believing for that God of hope to show himself strong. Amen? He'll, he's the God that set our daughter free from addiction. Our son-in-law. We have two beautiful granddaughters from them. And they're living, walking in victory. Oh, they have struggles. They have battles. But they have hope. They have hope. How about you? When a virgin gives birth to a son... That is a work of God and a sign that he can do anything. Do you believe that? I do. He's going to work all things out. I believe in this God. You know what it says in Luke 137? the, The angel Gabriel visited Mary and said this, for nothing, for nothing, will be impossible with God. Why don't you grab a hold of that today for your own life? For nothing will be impossible with God. Point number two, God with us is the hope we need. Say it with me, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Say it again, Emmanuel. Let it just resonate in your heart. Let it just bring the peace that passes all understanding. It means God with us. What song are you ending with? Can you do Emmanuel? Let's do that instead at the end. When creation cried out for help, God did not tell it to get its act together and then he would come close. Rather, God saw all that he had made and that he knew he needed to rescue us, and his first move was to come close. His first move was to be Emmanuel. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1 this morning. 1 Timothy chapter 1, another great verse you should highlight. 
This is what it says in verse 15 of 1 Timothy chapter 1. It says, here is a trustworthy saying. Everybody say trustworthy. trustworthy. Say it again, trustworthy. trustworthy. Does that mean we should believe it? Does that mean should we stake everything on it? Yeah, we should. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. That's Paul talking to his son in the Lord, Timothy, saying, this God is an awesome God. And he can do, he can make the impossible possible. Do you believe it? God did not come to us because we deserve it. God did not, he did not come to us because we earned it. He came to us because he loves us. He knew we could not get ourselves out of the mess we made. And long before Emmanuel appeared, it was hope in a God who would one day come and rescue his people. He'd rescue those Jewish people. He promised it hundreds of years earlier. It it is what inspired their hope. And today, we are inspired because he has come, just as was foretold. We should be the most excited, hope-filled people in the world because the prophecies years before, have many of them have been fulfilled. Amen? At Christmas, let's, let's bring it right to 2023. At Christmas, we had the luxury of looking back over the Old Testament prophecies and then seeing many of them come to fruition, not only through the birth of Jesus, but everything else that unfolded because of it. Amen? While the Israelites waited on God to come, we look back at a God who came and is presently with us still. Amen? So I want you to think of it this way. The people back in the time of Isaiah... Even Abraham, even go all the way back to Adam and Eve, they all looked forward. They looked forward with hope to the cross. They looked forward to a Savior that would be born. For us, everything that we have our hope in up to this point was looking back. They looked forward. We look back. But the beauty is now we all look forward to the second coming with hope. Isn't that wonderful? It's wonderful. Here's the good news today. There was a virgin who gave birth, and the child she bore was Emmanuel. And because of it, we have great hope. I I can't say it enough because I'm telling you, you're going to walk. Thank you for the water. You're going to walk out of here today and you are going to be confronted with a world that's not full of hope. You are going to be confronted with situations this holiday season, this Christmas season, that are going to irritate you. And if I just said it one time to you today that God gives hope, you'd say, well, Pastor, we get it. Well, I promise you that won't be enough. I need to burn this into your hearts by inspiration of the Holy Spirit so that when you have moments this month when you have moments this Advent season, when the checkbook doesn't have enough to buy all the gifts you need for all your kids, you can say, oh, I serve a God of the impossible. I serve a God of the impossible that will make what I need to provide for each child possible. I serve a God that's going to make things work out when my car has trouble. Do you know cars just break down? It's not a curse. It doesn't mean you're a worse sinner because your car breaks down. Matter of fact, true story, this woman who we used to have come to our church all the time, I think it was God's way of just smiling on me because I had a lot of car trouble, okay? And I still sometimes have car trouble. But I just trust God. This woman, she said, I pray over my Jesus mobile and it never lets me down. And we had this hailstorm come through Wilmer, not Wilmer, through uh, Northfield. Come through Northfield, this hail, I mean, biblical hail. I'm not kidding. Am I exaggerating? Landed on people's couches in their house because it came through the roof. It was that big. 
a true story. And we were having service at the church. I think it was a women's, yeah, women's morning. <laughs> and the hail was hitting the roof at the church. I'm telling you, it sounded like, boy, it was bad. I thought, the end's coming. Here we go. We're all together. We got outside. It, look, the cars were decimated. Every car's windshield was busted in. Serious. This is serious stuff. And she said, well, my Jesus mobile is fine because we had actually parked it over at the restaurant and she rode with us over to the church. Her Jesus mobile was decimated. <laughs> now, I'm not, I'm not making, fun, you know, I'm not saying, I'm just saying stuff happens to, most, to the most godly people. The people who are prayed up, who speak in tongues every day, you're gonna go home and your furnace is gonna go out. But you know what you do? You just trust in the God of hope. The God that makes a way where there seems to be no way. That test becomes a testimony. Do you hear me this morning? It's not because you're you're inadequate in your walk with God. It's because stuff happens. Stuff happens to the most godly people. I mean, none of us know of anybody that was nailed to a cross upside down or burned at the stake for following Jesus. Do you think if your transmission goes out, maybe it's just okay? (laughs) Serious. God is with us. Church, never lose heart. Never lose hope. God sees you right where you're at. Point three, Jesus' sacrifice gives us hope. The story of Jesus is bookended by two major events as we wrap it up today. The first is his birth that we read about in Isaiah 7. The second event is what confirms our hope is in the right place, and that's found in Isaiah 53. Turn with me there quickly, Isaiah 53, verse 5. Isaiah 53, 5, it says, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Lord, we pray for Brandy Tentis right now, that that verse is for her. Oh, Yes, God, you're the mighty healer. You're the everlasting Father. You're the Prince of Peace, God. Yes, Lord, we thank you today, God, that you're present. You're an ever-present God in time of need, in time of help. We run to you this morning. We cling to the cross today, not only on behalf of Brandy, but for so many others who need a touch from you, who need a miracle in their lives, God. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to, his, to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Hundreds of years before Jesus grows up to be a man and carries out the three years of his powerful ministry, hundreds of years before he will be arrested, crucified, killed, Isaiah writes about how the manger will lead to the cross. Isaiah starts in the manger, but ends at the cross. Jesus was pierced in his hands and and feet by nails holding him to the cross. He was crushed and beaten by his accusers. He was punished for wrongs he never committed himself. He received wounds on our behalf, and it is by the suffering that he went through that we have freedom for our own sin and rebellion, and today we have hope. We hope that we have hope that takes us beyond our infirmities. We have hope that takes us beyond our frailty. We have hope that takes us beyond our inadequacies. We have hope that takes us beyond our disappointments and our heartaches and our regrets. Don't live life with regret. Oh, I wish it would have worked this way. Have hope in a Savior that will make the impossible possible. Amen? Remember this. Hey, let's, go, let's, let's get this grounded in the right thing. You and I deserve the penalty of death. We do. 
for all the sinful things we've done. And Jesus took it on himself. And so your hope of healing, your hope of freedom, your hope of wholeness and eternal life is made possible because of Emmanuel, amen? And it is, and if if Christmas is the promise, then Easter is the proof. I'm just gonna think about that for a second. If Christmas is the promise, then Easter is, is the proof. As followers of the Lord Jesus, we celebrate Christmas because we know resurrection is coming. Not only do we know that resurrection's coming, but we know his return is imminent. We've give, we've, hey, we've been given the awesome privilege of offering hope to others. And what will you do with it this advent of 2023? It's gonna cost us something it might be a little bit of a sacrifice, but consider this on this Sunday, this first Sunday of Advent, you could please consider all that God has done for you. What's the least we can do for others? What's the least we can do for others? A Christmas card, a plate of cookies. Tell them about Christmas music on 90, is it 97.3? What's the radio station up here? How about the one you listen to? Do they do Christmas music too? Right on, right? Listen to this as we wrap up. Here's a story by David Livingstone. He was a Scottish missionary and explorer who spent 33 years in the heart of Africa. He endured much suffering as he labored to spread the gospel and open the continent to missionaries. This godly missionary, this is what he said. I'm gonna read to you verbatim what he said. People talk of the sacrifice I have made in spending so much of my life in Africa. Can that be called a sacrifice which is simply paid back as a small part of a great debt owing to our God, which we can never repay? It is emphatically no sacrifice. Say rather, it is a privilege. Anxiety, sickness, suffering, or danger now and then with a foregoing of the common conveniences and charities of this life may make us pause and cause the spirit to waver and the soul to sink, but let this only be for a moment. I count not my present sufferings to be comparable with the hope I have in Emmanuel. He goes on to say, all these are nothing when compared with the glory which shall hereafter be revealed in and for us. I never made a sacrifice. Of this we ought not to talk when we remember the great sacrifice which he made who left his father's throne on high to give himself for us. This holiday season, this Christmas season, may our hearts be filled with hope that is ours. Janet, would you come to the keyboard? May we be so overwhelmed. I want to be overwhelmed, church. I want to be overwhelmed by the goodness of God. I want to be overwhelmed by the Christmas music. I want to be overwhelmed by everything that happens during this Advent season that reignites hope at a greater level in my life and that I respond appropriately. Our serving king has been born and he has given us an example to follow. Let me ask you as we wrap up, what is one way you can offer hope to someone even this week ahead? I'm thinking about it right now, what I can do. I've already put, I'm not bragging. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you what I've done. The moment I see the little red kettle, man, I'm finding money. Even if it's change, I don't care what it is. I'm putting money in the little red kettle. And I'm telling them, You know what I do? I don't just put the money in and say, Merry Christmas. I say, hey, thanks for doing this. Thanks, what what caused you to do this? Why why are you here? You know, it opens up the, it opens up opportunities to witness. They have it at, it was at Super One. There was a couple young gals and they were sports people and I just complimented them on the great things they were doing. 
and trying to plant a seed, amen, about a God of hope that they'll need in their own life. As people of hope, let's fulfill God's calling on, in our lives this holiday, this Christmas, this Advent season. Amen? Pray with me. Lord, we thank you for a God of hope. A God of hope that was declared to the prophet Isaiah who would come as Emmanuel to a virgin born in a manger in a place meant for animals, the Lamb of God made his appearance and we've never been the same. Thank you today that we have this hope that sustains us. Thank you that we have this hope that encourages us. Thank you that we have this hope that keeps us keeping on. And so we thank you in this last song that we sing as these altars are open for people to come you come today, person, whoever you are, if you need prayer for whatever it is, if you need your hope reignited, you come to this altar. We pray these things in your strong and mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Stand with me this morning as we wrap up. One last song before we di dismiss, but the altars are open and uh, you come. Amen. Amen.
Who else would rocks cry out to worship? Whose glory taught the stars to shine? Perhaps creation longs to have the words to sing. But this joy is mine. With a thousand hallelujahs, we magnify your name. You alone deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord Jesus, this song is for especially for those maybe online that heard me praying in the spirit. I only do that when I feel the unction of the Lord. And usually what I try to do is right after that is interpret whatever I'm saying, which is totally okay with the word of God. But just so you know, uh, God bless you today. Shake at least a half dozen hands before you leave. Maybe invite somebody out to lunch this afternoon. God bless you. Have a great day. Be full of hope. Amen.